Welcome, welcome to the Rick Ellis Real Estate Show. Have you seen some of the headlines about uh, Remax paying fifty-five million to settle a lawsuit? Some other brokerages out there. I think it was Realogy that spent uh, I don't know twenty-five million. The neighbors is numbers escape me, but here's what's going on. There's a big class action lawsuit coming, so some of these big guys are trying to settle before it goes to trial on October sixteenth. You may see other brokerages brokerages start to settle as well. The whole thing boils down to some sellers, several of them getting together, forming a class action lawsuit against brokerages and the National Association of Realtors, claiming a violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act, and then that there was uh, forcing sellers to pay buyer's agent commissions. And so there's a lot of going back and forth on the merits of this case. Um one of the things that's really getting some of the brokerages in trouble was, you know, they're saying, well, no, we're not requiring you to pay a buyer's agent commission, but some MLSs are like Arizona, but they don't tell you how much. So you can circumvent that by offering $1 to a buyer's agent as a commission for them to bring you a buyer. So then the argument in the industry says, well, you can do that, but who's going to show your house? And this is where the rub comes in, because that's a violation of our code of ethics. And it's a violation that says you're supposed to show every house your client wants to see, regardless of the commission that you can make. Now, you can say that, but if you're looking and you can make two and a half to three percent or you only make a buck, I mean, you tell me what's going to happen. And some of these brokerages, the smoking gun is they had training sessions on videos and in books and coaches that go, here's what you tell your seller. You tell your seller, look. You want more boots coming through the front door of your home? You better offer a pretty decent buyer's commission. And so people really just didn't want to do that. Does it happen that traffic is a little less? Yeah, it, it does. Um, how much? You know, it, it depends. I mean, if I look at something that's three and two and a half and something that's two, it doesn't sway me either way. If you want to buy the house, I'll take you out and do it. But if there isn't anything being offered, you know, it's like being an Uber driver. You're not going to drive somebody around unless they pay you. So the industry is going to have kind of a shakeup. And I thought I'd take a look and see what goes on in the world and see how this works. Then I want to comment about um, who should they be paying, the seller or the buyer in this settlement? Because one of our subscribers had a great comment this morning on one of my shows. But here's what's going on in the rest of the world. Australia, the seller is the only one that has legal representation, you know, an agent, and the seller pays all the fees. So they pay a selling agent to list it. They pay him or her, and uh, the buyer shows up at your house unrepresented, negotiates with your listing agent, and you just pay the listing agent. There's no commission to the buyer's agent. Same with Belgium. China, the buyer pays everything. Says here, sellers use many different agents and only pays the agent that sold the apartment. Now, that sounds a lot like Panama. When I was in Panama, you'd see something that was for sale for $250,000 by such and such agency. And then you'd see that same house somewhere else for 10000 less. And then by the time you start circling around and you go directly to the owner, you're going to find out that you could save $30,000. So what these agents do is they, how much you want for your house? Two twenty. dollars Okay, I'm going to list it for two fifty. dollars I'll make thirty k. Well, there's another agent who comes in. How much do you want for your house? Two twenty. Okay, I'll list it for two forty. So the prices are everywhere. It's very confusing. No such thing as data integrity in Panama. With data integrity in the United States, everything that's on there, that's the number. You get fined if it's wrong. So I, you can't, I can't say I'm two hundred fifty thousand, and somebody at Remax is going to be two hundred forty. Doesn't work that way. Greece, seller and buyer pay commissions. Then it gets really confusing here. It says commissions usually paid by both parties in the actual sales for the purchase price, 2 to 3% plus a 24% value added tax. Too confusing for me to dive into. Russia. More often, the commission is paid by the seller, but in many cases, the commission is paid by the party that receives services from the real estate agent. The rate of commission is 3 to 4%. Interesting. So... I can be a buyer. I can hire an agent and say, go find me a house to buy. And you may not even be for sale. They go and negotiate with you directly, and I pay the agent to find the house. There was no listing commission. United Kingdom, 
the seller is the only one represented and the seller is the only one that pays fees. But it says sellers are always represented and only a small portion have buyer representation. So that's what you see kind of going on around the world. Now, here's kind of the funny thing that, that, that I don't get. And I understand there must be enough teeth in this to keep this lawsuit going. But they're claiming that that they have been bilked out of billions of dollars because they're forced to pay this money out. We can debate that till the cows come home. But who are you really settling with? In other words, it's one of my subscribers asked this morning. He goes, okay, so the seller's claiming that they had to pay this money to the buyer's agent, but that money only was there out of their net proceeds. Whether or not they would have gotten above and beyond that by not having a buyer's agent come in is a whole different debate. But the buyer paid that price that included that buyer's agent commission, and they refinanced that over 30 years. How come they don't get any compensation? Now, one time I had a listing, it was over a million dollars, and the client said, uh, I only want to offer 2% to the buyer's agent. I said, okay. He goes, what do you think about that? I said, well, let's look within a mile of your place, let's see what everybody else is offering. Because like it or not, that's probably what they look at. But uh, I, I saw 3%, 3%, 2.5, 3%. I said 2% is the lowest, but, uh, you know, we'll put that in there. We'll see what happens. One time I had a listing, I listed it for 1%, and I offered 5% and the buyer broke. I didn't get more traffic. It's interesting. Why didn't I get more traffic? Well, for two reasons. One, they thought it was a mistake. So <laughs> I'd call them, did you see the 5% buyer broke? Are you kidding me? And two, look, if you don't want the house, yet I make 5%, if I still can't convince you to buy the house. I mean, if you don't like it, you don't like it. So that commission could be 10%. I can't stand in the kitchen and go, no, take another look. Come on. Let's go on back. Look at the yard again. Not going to happen. You don't want it. You're not going to buy it. Sellers, look. You've always had the negotiating power, and you do to this day. The Pacific Northwest is one of the largest independent MLS services in the country. About a year and a half ago, they stopped putting, requiring commissions when you have a listing. Exactly what this lawsuit's about. This MLS got proactive, said, fine, you don't have to pay a buyer's commission. Guess what's changed in a year and a half? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Do you want to be the first one to walk away from that? I'm listing my house. I'm not going to pay a buyer's agent. Let's see what happens. You know what's going to happen. Your listing agent is going to have to be marketing and try and soliciting buyers in every source he can, devoid of the MLS, because everybody's going to get on there and go, well, I don't make a dime if I find a buyer for this. So that's the one of the indications that the industry is going to need to change, and I don't know how it's going to change. We're not real popular anyway, but he thinks we get too rich, we make too much money. Um, I don't know where this is going to shake out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But I think you could see if if these brokerages lose and they change their models, which you only have to tweak a couple things, you could also see that they lose, but then there's going to be a lot of appeal. It could go on for another 18 months. In the meantime, there's going to be people out there trying to figure this out. Probably have websites that offer concierge service. You want me to show you houses, this is how much I charge per hour. You want me to write the contract? Here's how much I charge. Want me to negotiate for the uh, inspection period? I have a flat fee of X. And you'll probably end up with basically these services that you can get to help you with the purchase of the home rather than getting hold of an agent and saying, help me find a house, help me do everything, and then you don't pay me anything that comes out of the seller's proceeds. But in reality, you are paying me because it's built in to the price of the home and you are financing it. So it's going to change. I don't know what's going to happen. It'll be interesting for me to watch. I don't care either way. I kind of like change. I just figure out where I'm going to fit in the middle of this. And uh, so for new agents, they're probably going, ooh, holy cow, I'm going to be out of a job. I don't think there's any need to panic or celebrate. If you're a seller going, yeah, we got them now. Um, and if you're an agent, I'm screwed. There's always wild reactions when this stuff first comes out. So we'll see what happens. I hope this helps. Do me a favor. Punch the like button.